So, starting in the side control, the same side of his body that my head is on, this is the first arm that we're gonna think about attacking. In terms of attacks on this arm, we're gonna think about maybe trying to hurt his shoulder, we're gonna think about maybe trying to hurt his elbow a little bit, or maybe even trying to hurt his wrist. Two of my arms on that same side of his body gives me one arm either side of this arm, and basically, depending on where this arm is positioned, might dictate which attack that we're gonna try. Let's look at, maybe Graham's gonna make a frame across the neck, just like he's done here. Very common placement of this arm. Not so easy for me to grab, and the more I pressure in, maybe the more pressure there is on my neck. Even something simple, like just moving my head away or pummeling my chin to the other side of this can be useful for me, but let's use this to set up our attack. I'm gonna put my head on the floor here. Boom, fast. And I'm gonna keep my head on the floor when I use my hand closest to Graham's head to try to grab his wrist. I'll show you guys from up here. I'm gonna to try to grab his wrist from over the top in a way that I can pin it to the floor. And the reason I'm putting my head on the ground is if I try to do that from up here, he has so much space to try to whip his hand away and maybe hide it. If Graham's hand stays on this side of my head and I put my head on the floor here, he can't bring it to this side. But in the first move, if his hand is on this side of my head and I put my head on the floor, he can't bring it to the other side, over here. And that's perfect for me. So again, his forearm is kind of in my neck, head to the floor, I'm gonna reach back and as I start to get over the top, I can lift my head up and almost like I'm doing a push up off this arm, I push to the floor. I'm holding myself up with this arm and I'm being careful because sometimes if somebody's stiff here, even just pushing their shoulder this way can be sore, but I push myself up so that I can get my other hand through to hold Graham's wrist. You'll notice both my hands are palmed down. Important here is to separate Graham's head from his arm. If Graham gets his head in this gap of my arm here, it's actually quite difficult to submit him and to turn his arm enough. So in this position, that gap has to be closed off. And in this case, my right elbow is gonna go on the floor right beside his neck. To submit my partner now, I'm just gonna bring their arm in as bent as possible and as close to their body as possible, thinking about keeping the wrist down, looking towards the legs, and I'm gonna lift up on the elbow. Common mistake with this one is to be kind of lifting the person's whole arm up and twisting and turning everything. I want you guys to think about bending your partner's arm, keeping the wrist down, and then cranking up on this elbow. Typically, the closer you can bring the elbow to the hip, the less flexibility someone's gonna have in their shoulder. And that's kind of where this hurts, is the shoulder, but perhaps what's gonna break, if something's gonna break, is down here at the elbow. So I'm twisting, 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 a lot of tension in the muscles up here, but a lot of pressure on the joint in the elbow as well. That one is the Americana, and that's the first option from side control with two arms on the other side of the body. I'm gonna go on this side of the head now. Another position we can find ourselves in when we put two arms over here is Graham's hand on the legs side of my head. No Americana for me here. This arm isn't gonna be able to grab anything. I, in this case, I'm gonna try a hand on the floor and pull Graham up towards me. This is something that I would not try if his hand was on this side, because I don't really have the same pull with this arm. But when his arm is on this side here, it becomes almost a nice hook. Again, I couldn't look for the Americana, and maybe I actually was looking for the Americana, and he hides it on the other side. I'm gonna slide my bum back to my heels, and look how even that encourages him to roll up off of his back a little bit. As I do that, I'm gonna cup the back of his shoulder and pull, and this is an important detail, disappear this elbow in front of your partner's chest, but keep your hand cupping the shoulder. We would call this a short underhook, and those that have practiced this next technique, an arm bar, will feel that, or should feel, that although they have a short, just one hand through here, they still have a lot of control with their head, their forearm, their elbow, their neck, their shoulder, their chest, around my partner's arm. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna just spin your feet towards the camera here now. Now we're gonna step around Graham's head. I'm gonna take a big step close to his head. Common mistake in this position is when we step over to put our knee on the floor, we'll avoid that. We'll step over and make sure that we put our foot on the floor, and now if we can scoot in the same direction a couple more times, 
I am gonna to try to get onto my toes here. The less of my foot that's on the floor, the easier that it's gonna be for me to pivot or spin. So when I step over his head, I'm on a toe, and I'm gonna to try to turn those toes back facing where I started. I started over here. I'm gonna to try to step, lift my heel, and turn my toes so that I can sit down on the other side. Let's spin a little bit back towards the camera now. Important when we sit down, and for now, Graham, you mind putting the legs flat. Never do this when you're sparring, but for the camera angle. When I sit close to my partner, excuse me, when I sit down, that I am close to my partner. A finish of this arm bar will be for to separate Graham's arms, extend his arm back, and try to put some pressure on his elbow. And for someone who's sitting far away here, when they fall back, the elbow is gonna be below my hips. Graham could even rip that to the floor there and exactly start to escape. So step around arm bar will be very, very important to step close to our partner and to sit close to our partner as well. If I can give you guys one great tip on this move is you'll notice when I'm sitting, my head is trying to stay forwards. Another mistake, and you can join your hands together to defend this, Graham, as I step around, but another mistake is to step and kind of throw yourself back as if you're gonna finish the arm bar, but very likely your partner is gonna defend with the hands, which is no problem, so I need to make sure I keep myself sitting up tall. One more time, step around arm bar. Let's go, let's keep that same angle, actually. I'm on this side, but you'll notice Graham's hand is on the same side of my head as his feet. Elbow disappears as I bring my butt back to my heels. Look, I'm stepping over his head and I'm on my toes and I turn and sit very, very close to him. To finish the arm bar here, I would squeeze my knees together. I would rotate his palm upwards. It's very important that the baby finger, if you extend that pinky first, Graham, just a the pinky there, exactly. Just the pinky is where I'm trying to go. If I try to go towards Graham's thumb, that's the way his arm wants to bend. But as I lie back, consider his pinky, pull it to the side and give opposite pressure with your knee, you're gonna be able to put a lot of pressure on your partner's arm. Nice one, let's go back to side control here, from straight from the One more situation that you can get caught in, not the Americana, not to step around arm bar, is somewhere where your partner's arm is kind of in between the two. It's not really there for a pull and up because it's not quite a hook here. It's also not really bent enough for me to think about grabbing the Americana. Americana is great for when your partner's arm is bent. And I'm kind of just looking at this arm in front of me here. Hey, something to consider. We can try to make it either or. Just with the position of our head, if I would like an arm bar here, instead of trying to move his arm into the correct position, I'm gonna just put my head in the correct position. Difficult for him to undo this now. If I wanted to try to do an Americana, I would grab it and get over the top and start to bend it as much as I can. But useful to have a tool for when our partner's arm is kind of more in the middle as well. What we're gonna to try to do is a straight arm lock. This is, can be one of the more difficult submissions to try. Excuse me, can be one of the more difficult submissions to finish because it's easy enough for Graham, we'll see, to rotate out of this, in my experience. But to rotate out of it is hopefully gonna present us a better chance for the Americana or for the armbar. Remember, Americana is here, I'm gonna grab it that side. Armbar is here, I'm gonna pull him up. He's kind of somewhere in between. I'm gonna grab wrist and force it to the floor and I'm trying to make his arm go straight. In this one, I'm gonna try to hold his wrist in such a way that if you stick a thumbs up there, Graham, that his thumb is up. I don't want his palm to be flat here. I want his thumb to be up in the air. I'm trying to use my forearm, excuse me, my palm on his wrist and his forearm to try to control that. Hey, remember, if you whip out of that somewhere, Graham, whichever way you like, try to just get bump, armbar. Or if it had been maybe the other way, he gets out, oh, bump, Americana up here. So I'm playing with it straight. I'm trying to hold his thumb up. I'm gonna to try to keep my elbow down on this grip that's holding his wrist, and I'm gonna still come underneath with my other hand and hold over my wrist as if we were doing the Americana. Americana would be his arm is bent. This one, as he tries to straighten his arm, notice that my elbows have to walk out far in front as well. I want you guys to be somewhere where you can touch your hands with your head. If you're back here, we're not gonna have the leverage. So my head is over the top, and for this one, I'm gonna push his wrist down, but my arm that's under his forearm, my arm that's under his arm, this left one in this case, needs to feel for his elbow, and I need to lift up into his elbow to make a straight arm lock pressure here. 
I finish this move a lot in training, but what happens more in training is the pressure on this causes him to panic, whips his arm out, and now I have a great opportunity to maybe step around armbar, maybe a different submission from here. Important thing is that his arm is not safe here, his arm is not safe here, and his arm is not safe here. Lovely.